a question here then. Uh, since the last ten words in First John two twenty three are all italicized, where did those words come from if they were not inspired? Italicized words are a little tricky if you get into this. Uh, in a real simple answer, if you study the translators, translators of sixteen hundred, when you translate from one language into another language, you never do so word for word. It would sound goofy. It wouldn't make any sense. You have to supply words that are in, implied by other languages. What may be two words in English, especially in the Asian world, they sometimes take 10 to 20 words in their language to express two or three words in ours. The shortest verse of the Bible is what? John 11, 35. But it's not in the Greek. In the Greek, it's a different verse because it's just one word. In John 11, 35, it is uh, three or four words in the Greek language with uh, John 11, 35. So different languages is different verb each in need. And so italicized words were predominantly supplied by smart guys translating, putting words that had to be in there to properly translate a word. Um, all scriptures give them inspiration of God. Given by inspiration of God. Five words. Theopneustos. One word. Three. So Theopneustos, God inspired, God breathed literally, given by inspiration of God. But that isn't what the word says, but that's what it means. So does that mean it's uninspired? No, that's that's the work of translation. That's that's why God used smart men who know how to translate from one language to another. You ever hear somebody speak in English and they're translating to get it in Spanish? And he says, uh, Amen, right, brother? And blah 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 like, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying what she said. It takes more words sometimes to supply. And in very fairness, the King James translators tried to be scrupulously honest. And so when they had to put words in the sense of meaning, they had to Question on that? Please. Yeah, I just wanted to say, the last ten words in that verse are not even in the, in the Greek from which it was translated. Like there are ten italicized words in a row, and not just one italicized words to buffet or join two other words. The King James translator must have felt that that was necessary for the understanding of, of those words. Uh, obviously, I don't know your educational background completely. Not much. And, uh, you know, I'm 50 years old. And I've been in college education literally since I went off to college. And to be very honest with you, I probably personally only know three men, maybe four, who know Greek and Hebrew on a level well enough to do sincere translating. Now, there are more than that out there, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's, there's a young man who's in his 30s who's one of the most brilliant linguists I've met. Um, I think he could. Uh, I think I think for the Philippines could marginally to a degree. He knows he knows his, his language is pretty good. Um, I think with the Joe Boyd, not now his mind's slipping pretty fast and fading, but I think he he probably does read well enough to read it. I know he did to read it because I was I've been with him many times and studied. And then one or two professors that I had in other schools that I felt were, were sharp enough to translate scripture. Not to look at a, a Greek word and get a sermon from it, but to translate from a text. It's, it's, that's hard work. And so, part of the whole King James issue is that a lot of us who are not very smart, we've never translated any scripture. And uh, we don't really know what the process involved are sitting somewhat in judgment on people who are just way over our heads in ability. And that's where our faith comes in, believing that God divinely assembled smart men together in Hampton Court and let these men go to work on translating it. Just happened to have assembled all the Greek manuscripts, happened to have with them the Bishop's Bible and the Great Bible and uh, a copy of, 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 of um, uh, the scriptures in Spanish, uh, happy to have uh, uh, some of the earlier English versions uh, to compare them all with, 
that you don't have that in your library. I mean, if you want to translate right now, you'd have to take, where would you go? I mean, you don't have any of the handwritten manuscripts of the Greek. They're all in Oxford, Cambridge, and Westminster University. That's where the colleges came from. Uh, William of Orange assembled all those documents together, got them all together. King James, he said, I felt that God wants me to write a Bible. I wonder why. I wonder who that desire in. Probably, you know, he's a Church of England, Anglican, baby baptizing. Man, but God put his heart to do that because he had authority and he had official printers. The best printers in the world were his personal king printers. Uh, uh, Mr. Barker Parker from England, whose family still prints. And by the way, the Texas King James Bible is still held by the, the, the uh, King's Palace in England. It still is copyrighted. The Cambridge edition. So on the King James question, could you comment on the idea that uh, because the King James is the perfectly preserved Word of God in English, that it is not necessary to know or to study the Greek or Hebrew. Necessary depends what you want to do. I mean, do, do you or I have to know Greek or Hebrew to know the King James Bible? No. A good English dictionary will help most of us out more than anything else. Since it's written in English, it'd be good if we started with learning the English words. And uh, you know, the greatest, the most perverted version I believe that exists out there is the version we assume we understand by supplying our own definitions to words we don't know what they mean. Yeah. And we rewrite our own Bible that way while criticizing everybody else who has their version of the Bible who actually did their homework and actually tell us why they chose that version. I think we are more reckless in our, in our uh, hermeneutical uh, study of the Bible than the NIV translators who at least honestly sat down with Greek and Hebrew and tried to come with a translation. I'll be a faulty one by those of us who understand textual criticism, but at least they did homework. Whereas a lot of us read the Bible and just assume we know what those words mean and then even preach some of that stuff. And a few people who know their yeah. stuff kind of scratch their head and say, you know what, that that is not anywhere close to what that text means. Yeah. But since you are a pastor or a preacher, you're prostituting your position and exercising assumed you're usurping authority mm -hmm. and, and that's dangerous I think one thing is really missing Brother Joe from our fundamental movement um, please don't think I'm a naysayer I, I don't come out to, to, to deride our, our movement but our movement has some weaknesses that will kill it and if we don't make some corrections in, the, in, in our direction you and I will have, be hard pressed for our grandkids to recognize what fundamentalism is.